Hello everyone, you may notice this is once again not a hammer tutorial. Today we're looking at the GTEC E180. Much like I did about seven months ago now, I was able to get a printer from my brother through GearBest. 3D printing has now become a hobby. This is a newbie friendly printer that has a kind of small build volume of 130, 130 by 130, but you can actually print a lot of things on this. Most of the stuff that's on my desk that you'll see in the background could actually be printed on this without a problem. Quick physical tour of the product. There is the uh, touch screen here, power button. On the back, we have X carriage. There's a fan in here and a part fan, which is pretty cool. The extruder and the cover just pops right off in case anything gets jammed in there. You can get it out. Snaps back on. Power. USB and a micro SD slot. It comes with a one gig micro SD card, which is actually more than enough to store prints on it, but you may not have to even use that as this printer does have wireless and there is a slicer available for this made by GTEC. And the slicer is what turns your model into what's called G code that allows the printer to actually print it. This is pretty much exactly how the printer looks when you take it out of the box. Instead of using blue painter's tape, I've put build tack on here just for a quality of life improvement. The blue painter tape works great, but eventually it will tear down and you'll have to replace it. Build tack just lasts longer. And if you order some off of AliExpress, it's super cheap. This entire printer is in the neighborhood of about $240, which actually isn't that bad for a printer that you literally take out of the box set on your desk and print. Let's go ahead and plug it in. This is your countdown timer if you're printing something along with your wireless indicator. We can go to our settings. Under the Wi-Fi option, you may think you can set the Wi-Fi, but this is really just the Wi-Fi name that it's currently connected to and the IP address if it has one. You can turn the Wi-Fi on and off, but when you click set, it's going to take you to config mode. So you'll need to download their mobile app for this. I actually have completely opted to skip that as I run my printers over a wired network connection. You can check out about really quick. It'll tell us our build volume of 130 by 130 by 130, along with the model and all that other good stuff. You can go to the printing tab, and this is what is currently on our SD card. We have a cat print, and 424 is a dog print, of all things. We'll end up printing one of those a little bit later. And under control, we have a few different settings here. This is for the fan if you want to turn it up or off. Like You may be able to hear a fan right now, but we can just shut that off. And that's the controller fan, but we'll usually just leave that on. When you turn it back on, it turns on to 100 instead of 50%. We'll just turn that back down. And then this is the hot end fan, which will usually get turned on during a print. You can adjust the speed of the printer. By fault, it is at 100%. This printer's speed is rated at about 80 millimeters a second to 110 millimeters a second. We're able to move our axes. So that just homed everything. It wants to home everything before you start moving stuff around so you accidentally don't go over bounds. You can see the Z start to come down. You can move the bed back. Camera angle isn't great, not equipped for this, like I said, but you can see the X carriage move and we'll just rehome all of that. Now, if you're watching this video and you've owned a printer before, you'll notice that the Z went up on home. That's because Z homes to the top of this printer and I'll show you why in a little bit. Going back under control, under filament of all things, this is where you can set the temperature of the head along with extrude and retract once heated. You are able to extrude and retract while the nozzle is off. You typically don't want to do that, but if you're trying to load filament, you can use the extrude feature to kind of help you along with that. And we have assisted bed leveling. So you're gonna see the Z come down. Now let's just move it to the front. There are these five points, and when you tap one of these, it will go to that relative position on the bed. So hitting four is going to send it to this front corner. And what it's doing here is it is it's putting the head 
to this position on the bed. You can bed level these much like you do any other printer with bed leveling. You're going to start with a standard piece of paper. They give you a Allen wrench, but I have my own screwdriver. And we're going to just go from corner to corner once I get that under the nozzle. And we're going to adjust these screws. These screws have springs underneath them to raise and lower the bed at each corner. And we just adjust this screw until the head catches this piece of paper. So now piece of paper is caught. If you go too much, you just tighten it back down. You don't want the paper to rip. You want it to catch. And you'll get a feel for it more as you do more manual leveling. And you just go from corner to corner to do that to all of them. Once that is complete, your bed is leveled. Looking back at the screen, you'll see that this says Z130. We can use these 0.05 and 0.5 steps to move the Z height up and down when we're leveling. And if you wait too long on a screen, it times out, but it does not move the head back. So now if I go to leveling again, we have to wait for it to home to the top and then come all the way back down. And sometimes, It'll just home to the top and won't come back down, so you have to back out of that menu and go back into it again. That so far has been the only annoyance of this printer. But as I was saying, you can use this 0.05 millimeter step and 0.5 millimeter step to bump this entire Z height up and down. You can see it moving. And then if I hit OK, it's going to set that value and that's where it will come back to. I'm just going to reset that back to where it was. I'll hit OK, save that, and then we just go back again. Before, as I was saying, it homes to the top. This is because this printer does have power loss resume. And what power loss resume means that if by chance you lose power while you're printing, this will resume the print job. I'll go into back to home, and I'll go to printing this time. And I'm just going to select the 424G code. And it gives me a little check mark here. You may be able to see that. But first, we do need to load our filament if we would actually like to print something. So on the back here, there's this little tube. This is where filament goes in. I'm going to go to the control section and filament. And we'll turn this on. And we'll just set it to 210 degrees, is what the manual recommends. So that can heat while we load our filament. This printer does come with this stand. Um, it's horrible. It's absolutely garbage. Um, works better as a headphone stand. I do not use it. It has fallen over consistently every time I use it. Instead, I have these rollers that I will use on my cheap $8 Amazon filament, which is also something to note, is that this printer prints great with crappy filament. And what we're going to start with doing those are going to straighten out a little bit of this filament. And the end here is misformed from pulling it out of a printer. So I'm going to take some side cutters. Everyone should have these if they have a 3D printer. And just cut this on an angle. So now we end up with a point here. And this is going to help us get the filament into the PTFE tube and end better. I do this on every printer. Works great. Something that my brother showed me. Put this guy on the rollers, and you just pop that guy into the tube. And this spring here, this little, this little tab, you push that forward, and that will allow you to move the filament into the printer. And then once it's actually loaded past the extruder you'll see it start to come through the ptfe tube if you want to be lazy you can just hit the extrude icon on the printer and it will start pushing it through that can be obnoxiously slow though pushed that through the rest of the way and then we'll hit extrude again and then ideally we should start to get I'm gonna move this head over a little bit so you can see should start to get some plastic dripping out of here since we're heated there it comes 
So that's just coming off of the uh, the nozzle there, and it's going to keep extruding until you hit pause. So we'll just pause that. And we'll just grab this stuff, and this is now garbage. You want to make sure that it actually extrudes before you start a print, so that way the nozzle actually has plastic in it. When you're slicing a model, you'll typically either have a prime to prime a little doot of plastic, or you'll have what's called a skirt, where it kind of outlines the print, and that will also get plastic into the head ready for the print. I'll go back to the printing menu. I will select the G code for that file, and I will hit print. We'll let that go for a minute while it prints. I just wanted to show you what a giant benchy looks like on this guy. This was printed with this same filament. This is just, this filament is generic as can be. Uh, off Amazon filament, paid like eight bucks for the entire roll, and I do a lot of my prototyping work with it. The black on the bottom here is from leftover black filament that was in the printer that I did not clean out. The print is great. I actually had no stringing, did not have to clean this print up at all. This is exactly how it came off. It took about four hours to print this Benchy, uh, and I think the quality on it is pretty good. There's a little droop here. I don't know if you can see it inside of the porthole, but that could have been fixed with some supports. The other one is fine. Inside the top of the cabin, there's zero issue with the bridging. It's difficult to see without actually having the model in your hands, but you'll just have to take my word for it. So I'm going to let this print for a little bit, and then I'll show you guys the power loss resume feature. It's been a few minutes. We actually have some plastic laid down. The screen says we are on layer 7 of 616. To show how the power loss resume works, I'll just go ahead and shut this guy off at the power strip. Turn it back on. And then we go back to printing. And it says print pause. So if we just hit play, it's going to home back to the top because it has to figure out where it is. You can't see it on the screen, but it's reheating the nozzle. So once it reaches the print temperature of the print, it gets its happy self right back to work. So if you're someone who already has printers and you're looking at this guy for like a part printer or something like that, just to have as like a backup, I'm going to cancel this print, tell it yes. And it's going to rehome. But if you have any other printers, you've probably heard of Octoprint and this printer does work with Octoprint, which is awesome. So I have a Raspberry Pi right here running OctoPi. We take our standard USB cable, connect it up, plug it into the back here. This was one of my concerns um, when I got this printer. I really wanted to use it with Octoprint. I liked to use that to monitor all of my prints. Here is the Octoprint server for this printer. So here's the Octoprint server for this printer. We click connect, the printer's actually going to restart itself. For some reason, when you connect, it does reset. But once we're connected, everything's here. We can see the two G-code files that are on the SD card. And here are the two that I uploaded earlier. We have our temperature readout and all of that fun stuff. There's no webcam hooked up to this Pi, so we're not gonna get that. But I can control after you home the axis, you're able to control it just like normal, any other printer through Octoprint. So this is what I use to end up controlling all of my printers. The baud rate is 115200. Click on connection. We can see that right there. And for some reason, you also have to specify the serial port. You cannot leave that on auto but it does work and it works very well. This Benchy print was printed using Octoprint at about 80 millimeters a second. Came out very well. There's no problems with overhangs in the cabin or anything like that. But this printer is actually really great. In the neighborhood of about $240, if you have the extra money to spend on this guy, I think it's a great printer to have. I'll end up using it to print parts for my other printers a lot or just small little doodads. It doesn't have a heated bed, but with the build tech or blue painters tape, you really don't have to worry about that. You can just run off a part very quickly on it. Zero issues with this Benchy that came off on the build tech through Octoprint. So in the neighborhood of about $240, I think this printer is a great starter printer. I'm not a starter anymore, but I'll still end up using it to run off smaller prints 
little doodads and trinkets because I don't have to heat the bed. If I have a print that's only going to take me 10 minutes, it doesn't make sense to spend three minutes or four minutes heating the bed on one of my larger printers to print off that small part. Plus, you can whip this guy around really fast at 110 millimeters a second without an issue. So this is great for, for prototyping work as long as you fit the 130 by 130 by 130 build constraint. I hope you guys enjoyed this, testing out some 3D printer content on the channel. If you guys are a fan, let me know. If not, I'm sure you'll let me know. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned for all the source engine development stuff and I guess 3D printing now.